This week, the blockchain industry got a massive wake-up call with an exploit that impacted users on many of the major multiple blockchains. But Cardano was left completely unaffected because of its contrarian design decisions that separates it from the rest of the industry. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. Also, do yourself a favor and mint USDM so that you can take advantage of the best up and coming opportunities that come with owning Cardano's premier stablecoin. Also, if you own ADA, you can join me on my mission to produce the highest yielding stake pool in the Cardano ecosystem. You can do that by delegating to me as your Cardano DREP and then delegating to the LGC stake pool that's for Lake Game Crypto to start earning those rewards today. Monday morning, if you're in the US, on September 8th of 2025, we got news about a massive exploit that impacted users on Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, Tron, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and potentially some other EVM connected networks. The exploit was so widespread that pretty much all blockchain users were recommended to not make any on-chain transactions at all if you didn't have a hardware wallet. And even if you did have a hardware wallet, it was recommended that you absolutely double check everything thoroughly to make sure all of the transactions were being submitted correctly. That's like, that's completely insane. That's absolutely bonkers. Like, can you imagine if at this point in time, we had achieved a greater level of mass adoption and this is the infrastructure that everybody is using. I don't think people seem to realize that this could have been a thousand times worse and nobody seems to care. And if you wanna see the perfect demonstration of both technical and emotional insecurity, you can look to a lot of the posts that were put out by a lot of mainstream crypto communities that identified and recognized the fact that Cardano was completely unaffected by this exploit. Except the reason that they attributed it to was the uh, false accusation that Cardano doesn't have any users and therefore just wasn't worth hacking. I mean, it's kind of funny. It, it, I, I'm glad they can have a sense of humor about it because I wouldn't. At first, I was a little bit upset about it, but I, I chose not to be because I, I came to the realization that at a time when institutions and, and major players are paying attention to the space more than ever before, Cardano got some free advertising out of this. I don't believe for a second that institutions and major players are going to be convinced that hackers just left free money on the table. They didn't go after Cardano just because they don't have quite as many bots as mainstream crypto ecosystems do. The reality is that malicious actors are always going to go after the lowest hanging fruit, and that simply does not fit the definition of what Cardano is in the industry. So if you're recognizing this as the wake up call that it should be, then I recommend that you use my partners at Giro Dashboard to get involved with the Cardano ecosystem. Giro Dashboard is the only crypto wallet that you're ever gonna need in the Cardano ecosystem. Very soon, they will be launching the Giro Crypto card, which will allow you to spend your ADA and other Cardano native tokens faster, cheaper, and easier than any other self-custodied wallet card in the entire crypto ecosystem. You can also accumulate ADA without actually having to buy it directly, thanks to this wallet being the first ADA cashback program in the entire Cardano ecosystem that allows you to earn ADA just by shopping at retailers that you're likely already shopping at today. And if you plan on participating in the Midnight Airdrop, there will be a built-in Midnight Claiming portal so that there's absolutely no risk of clicking on a malicious link and getting scammed out of all your night tokens. So if you're looking for a place to get started in the Cardano ecosystem, Geo Dashboard is one of the most feature-rich and easy-used places to get started. And now let's get back to the video. Now, I want you to understand the nature of this exploit because I think that it demonstrates perfectly the difference between infrastructure that takes time to build properly and 
infrastructure that copies and pastes code and creates centralized dependencies and widespread vulnerabilities. All of this started with a phishing attack that targeted just one, though highly respected, developer by the name of Quix. This developer is responsible for quite a few developer packages uh, listed on NPM, which is the default package library for the JavaScript coding language. And I guess I don't know exactly how many packages overall, but there were 18 in particular that were impacted by this exploit, and these packages put together uh, account for about 2 billion downloads per week. And these particular packages happen to be dependencies on just about every single major dApp wallet and other blockchain parallel services on every major blockchain that I mentioned before. If there was ever an event that demonstrated how much of mainstream crypto is just straight copy pasta, this is that event. So what this hacker was able to do after executing a successful phishing attack he was able to get into Quix's NPM account and push an update to all of these packages to include malicious code. In simple terms, the design behind this exploit was that any protocol or wallet that was using these dependencies, using these packages, it would algorithmically replace receiving addresses with one that was owned by the attacker. So basically, anytime anybody would try to execute a, a, a swap on a decentralized exchange, or maybe even a basic transaction on a wallet, or uh, some kind of a smart contract execution on any of these blockchains, the design was that it would send that crypto, send those assets to the attacker. And this was basically a Trojan horse because they could do this without being detected at all. Because unlike Cardano, you can't review the details of how this, the, the transaction logic is happening when it executes at the time of signing the transaction. There are many reasons as to why Cardano wasn't impacted by this exploit, and it is exactly the same reasons why Cardano is more prepared than a vast majority of the crypto ecosystems to be able to handle mass adoption from a security standpoint. First of all, Cardano doesn't use JavaScript as one of its main key programming languages, which may make it a little bit less accessible for uh, larger developer communities, but it's one of the three least secure coding languages in the world. No serious financial infrastructure would ever use it as its base. And it was one of the key dependencies that made this exploit possible. The second reason that Cardano was marked safe from this exploit is because Cardano uses Haskell as its primary base coding languages, which is probably the most secure language in the world. And it can implement formal verification logic so that exploits like this are a heck of a lot harder to pull off. Formal verification logic makes it so that there are mathematical proofs in place so that different smart contracts are not actually able to execute in a way that wasn't intended. Let me use an analogy to see if I can break this down in more simple terms here. Let's say uh, you're building a bridge, like a literal bridge that's intended to be able to get cars and motorcycles from one side of a river to the other. Formal verification in this case is the mathematical proofs that says that if a, a freight liner or, or a military tank wanted to go across the bridge, it, the transaction just wouldn't work. I'm always a little bit skeptical about uh, making analogies on things that I don't actually personally understand thoroughly myself. Maybe an actual developer could come up with a better analogy for it. But the point that I'm trying to demonstrate here is that these sort of these supply chain attacks like what we saw on these major blockchains this week, uh, it would be not impossible to execute on Cardano, but there is a, a margin of error that it has to operate within, a, a limited window where malicious code can be hidden in order to be successfully executed on Cardano, which makes it a lot harder. And the third and probably most simple reason that Cardano wasn't impacted is quite simply put, uh, Cardano operates on a different address format, a, a, a different security standard algorithm for, for producing different 
wallet addresses. Some of you that use EVM and Cardano might have noticed that the Ethereum ecosystems use an address format that starts with OX, and Cardano wallet addresses start with ADDR. That's kind of a, a little thing that, that's not really a massive major security feature or anything, but it, it is meant to demonstrate that Cardano does things in such a contrarian way. It does things so differently than the rest of the cryptocurrency ecosystems that security is a massive feature in the Cardano ecosystem because you have to take special attention if you're going to hack Cardano. This is why I think Cardano wins in the end, because it ultimately stands out from the rest of the industry as a ecosystem that does things differently. If there's any major ecosystem that really is going to pull ahead of the rest of the crypto industry, it has to be somebody that's doing things substantially different. And I think Cardano fits that description. I hope you didn't need all of this content to remind you to check and double check all of your transactions at all times before signing, but I do hope that this helped you to understand why exactly Cardano's infrastructure is superior to EVM in so many different ways. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose, learn as much as you can about this space, and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.